we have a bespoke 90 kilowatt hour, hour battery pack. And the battery pack comprises of 432 lithium ion pouch cells. These lithium ion pouch cells utilize nickel manganese cobalt chemistry. We've selected this chemistry because we believe it's the most energy dense form of chemistry available on the market today. And each of those cells are arranged into 36 modules, each comprising of 12 cells. IPACE has got 400 PS uh, and 696 Newton meters of torque. We're approaching supercharged V8 territory here. Uh, because it's a pure EV, what that means though, of course, is that the torque is delivered instantaneously, that instantaneous level of response. It will accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 4.5 seconds. That's 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.8 seconds. That's faster, as you know, than many sports cars on the road today. The body structure is 94% aluminium, and that's actually more than any previous Jaguar. It's benefiting from our 20-year expertise, not just in designing aluminium body structures, but in manufacturing aluminium body structures as well. That enables us to deliver an overall weight, a mass of just over 2,100 kilograms. What we've got here is a clean sheet ground up design. As a result, we've got aluminium uh, subframes at the front and the rear, and then in between them, we've placed the battery frame as low as possible uh, in the car. The battery frame <laughs> provides an integral part of the car's body structure and designing the battery frame at the heart of the architecture helps us create what is actually the stiffest Jaguar yet. But that rigid body structure allows us to deliver great dynamics. The center of gravity actually on this car is 130 millimeters lower than that on an F-Pace. And the weight is placed centrally between the axles, so clearly what it also does is enable us to optimize weight distribution front and rear. So the front suspension uh, you'll recognize from F-Type. So aluminum extruded uh, frames, double wishbones, that provides the you know, really precise level of steering feedback and dynamic response. At the rear, there's actually an evolution of the F-Pace integral link rear suspension. The car will also uh, have the option of air suspension, uh, an air suspension with continuously variable dampers. And these really do serve to minimize the level of body roll and, and to maintain that real flat, sports car-like attitude when you're going through corners. Now, of course, the car is an SUV, uh, and with air suspension, uh, it has three height settings, uh, one for access, a normal height, and then an off-road clearance. The suspension has a range of 90 millimeters, minus 40 millimeters for access, and plus 50 millimeters for off-road driving. That includes wading. It will wade up to 500 millimeters. Incidentally, the car actually also lowers intelligently at high speeds to obviously make the most of real-world aero and range opportunities. So the battery pack powers two motors, as you know, one on the front and obviously uh, one on the rear. These motors are very compact and lightweight. Each motor and transmission weighs about 78 kilograms. So the drive shaft passes right through the center of the motor. This obviously helps us optimize weight, but also from a package perspective, it's very compact. So it enables us to maximize interior space. And particularly at the rear, what it's enabled us to do is get the trunk floor as low as possible, but at the same time, obviously, give us off-road clearance. They use synchronous rare earth permanent magnets. And we've selected these because they're the most efficient of their kind. These motors provide more than 95% efficiency on a particularly wide range of vehicle speeds speeds from between 30 kilometers an hour up to 150 kilometers an hour. Now we've got independent front and rear motors, so that means we have an absolute level of torque control between the front and the rear of the car. And that system is managed by Jaguar's intelligent driveline dynamic software. You can select between two levels of braking, high and low. When you're in high regen mode, the moment you take your foot off the accelerator, regenerative braking starts, and that's even before you touch the brakes. So you'll notice a deceleration immediately, far, far faster than obviously if you were coasting in a, in a gasoline or diesel engine. We call this single pedal driving. So the regenerative braking can actually bring the vehicle to a complete stop without the driver even pressing the brake. And in doing so, it can deliver up to 0.2 G of braking force. The car can deliver a further 0.2 G of regenerative braking force when the driver presses the pedal, that's 0.4 G in total. Now we think that around 98% of all braking events can actually be achieved with regenerative braking. 
what that means is it's actually possible to complete an entire emission cycle without the driver actually using the brakes. I-PACE is very aerodynamic for an SUV. It's got a CD of just 0.29. It's got active vanes in the front, obviously improving real-world aerodynamics and real-world efficiency. It has a floating rear spoiler. That's really important because obviously it manages lift, but what it also does is it helps us to manage the airflow of the car from the front all the way tightly over the car and around the back. There's one big benefit of that, well, there's no rear wash wiper. We've been able to deliver the smart technology I've talked about because of the time that we've saved in the vehicle development program. We estimate that we've saved up to around 12 months in the development of iPACE by using a, an extreme amount of virtual modeling in all of our engineering. Uh, and this is obviously very important, particularly when you consider how quickly battery technology is evolving and changing. We've increased our levels of advanced CE, including thermal modeling, acoustic modeling, and crash modeling, before we verify any of this in the real world. More than 11,000 hours of virtual and rig testing were deployed on iPACE to refine the dynamic capability and dynamic character of the car. We've tested the car over 1.5 million miles across three continents and proven it in temperatures from minus 40 to plus 40 degrees. In particular, the battery and the motors have been durability tested up to five times the life of the vehicle in both rig and, uh, of course, road testing. iPACE will travel 480 kilometers on a full charge, and that's, crucially, that's measured by the new WLTP test cycle. When you're charging iPACE, uh, you can actually preset the charging schedules, uh, and this will allow you to use the lowest cost energy. You can actually use the iPACE's smartphone app uh, to make the most of its battery efficiency. So you can set the car to actually preheat to its optimum temperature if you're plugged into the, the mains ahead of your daily commute. And this will then obviously maximize the efficiency of the battery and, and therefore maximize the range. We've calculated that it's actually possible to extend the range of the car by up to 100 kilometers by using mains charging to precondition the battery on a freezing cold morning. We have an obsession for energy utilization and efficiency. And this continues through the use of a smart heat pump. The smart heat pump and heat exchanger can scavenge thermal energy from the front of the car. Even in sub-zero temperatures, it can scavenge energy. And through the efficiency of the heat pump and the heat exchanger, it can turn one kilowatt of thermal energy into two and a half kilowatts of energy at the battery. The car can also utilize heat generated by the car's propulsion system to warm up the cabin. And in doing so, it reduces the demand on the battery. So by applying these techniques, we've calculated again that we can actually increase the range of the car by about 50 kilometers.